and let there be light. fitting here that lamp post I was thinking about doing two but it would look too awkward having one over here and then one over there I don't know it just looked too weird so but one might be better because it can cover it looks like it covered okay now for these lights the the base actually slides up and down so what I did was I just measured and then I just use a little bit of uh, crazy glue to glue it in place so we're gonna have one light there and then we're gonna have one light over, about over here and another one right here. And that's gonna be the, the double light. I'm using a 1 16th drill bit and just drilling it right down. As this glue, as this is glued to the height that I want it, um, this is about the 1 16th and I just feed everything through and uh, just feed everything down. Now to power this, to power these lights, I'm gonna show you underneath the layout what I'm gonna be doing. And the way that I'm going to go and install this permanently is I'm going to use some tacky glue. So this is the tacky glue that I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit at the base. So after that's dried, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up in here with the gravel. Now, for the lights, find out what the height is. I'm actually measuring from the top of the light down to two and a, two and a quarter inches. And then I'm gluing this base piece right here so that it's solid. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of crazy glue up here so that these uh, light fixtures up here, they don't turn around. And then we install the next one. Maybe this time I'll actually record it uh, fishing through the wire, so hopefully uh, this time I won't have no troubles. All right, so the way I do this, I just add, this is uh, Gorilla Gel Crazy Glue. Stuff is fantastic. So I squeezed out just a little bit. So it's just a drop. Rotate the shaft. And as I'm pushing this, sorry, as I'm pushing this down, I spin the shaft and just quickly mark it right there, two inches, two and a quarter inches, and voila. Very small touch of crazy glue underneath, just to keep it from spinning around. Next thing to do is at the end of the wires, I am going to twist them. So instead of dealing with separated wires trying to fish it, which is a lot difficult, by doing this makes it into one wire, actually strengthens it as well, stiffens it, and uh, it's easier to fish. Now we're just going to clean this area out and uh, then we'll do it for the next one. Uh, I added two more light posts here. Let's zoom in, check it out. All right, so these are the single lap posts. Um, I decided to put these ones here, one on this side and one on the other side, as you can see where the pink tripod is. I'm gonna explain why that's there in a second. And uh, that's just so that it, it lights up the roadway there just past the, um, the check-in house. Okay, so what was going on with this lamp post? I, I guess I must've drilled a hole on an angle because uh, it's sitting by itself, it's actually leaning into the right. So what I did was, as I put the tacky glue on, I used the, the cell phone tripod that I have just to kind of uh, push it over to the left to keep it straight. So I think it uh, looks pretty straight to me. So we'll see how it looks when it finished drawing. All right, so we have we have one, two, and three 
double lights and then two of the single LED lights over here. The power plant office over here is lit as well, so is the power plant itself. Uh, I did not bother lighting up this guy, only for the fact, I guess, uh, I bought this structure here used from my local hobby shop. And I guess they must have used super glue. I tried to try to I tried to take it apart, but it didn't work, uh, and I didn't want to play around with it. Uh, the reason why I was trying to take it apart was to paint the insides black, the walls, so that the light doesn't shine through the wall. Um, like I said, would have been too much of a big job, and I didn't bother with it. It's all right. A couple of uh, a new thing here that I did. You guys probably noticed. The way I have done this is not recommended. I am not recommending this whatsoever. Only for the fact that you could overload the light hub. Um, I am taking the chance. This system is good. It's not great. It's good, but expensive. I am using the Woodland Scenics Just Plug Light Hub. There are four ports, one, two, three, four. The first one is for the power plant itself which has two led lights in it and the office the power plant office that has one led light port number two is powering all of the street lights and there is two four six eight yeah eight lights now what i did was i'm using a distributor or a splitter or so this is for number port one this is port two and then yeah and then the, for the cables that i'm using i am using two core 22 gauge stranded wire so this one's uh, insulated uh, the reason why i did this is just to keep it neat to keep it clean so there's no wires all over the place so as you can see two wires going that way then there's two more wires coming over this way so what we have is up in this corner here plus halfway right about there is the street lamps that you saw on the center island coming into the facility and then right about here and here is the um, single overhead street lamps they come in over here and then i soldered one two three uh, three wires together and then i put them into the screw terminals up here and then that one, like I said, is for the power plant and for the building. So port number three, what I'll probably end up using that for is for the gooseneck lighting for the man doors. And then I want to kind of like make, like I was saying, make those flood lamps for the, for the big overhead doors on either side of the power plant. So that will go to port three and then maybe port four I'll probably put some nice um, lamps for the beach area type of thing. We'll see how that goes. So right now, this is what I'm using. I am using the or just plug on and off power switch. Uh, this is temporary. This is not what I'm going to use. What I'm going to I'm going to use an lit push power button to put on the fascia, something to make it look nicer. This kind of like I don't know, it's half fast type of thing. Uh, they could have done a better job. All right, so that's underneath the table couple of uh, new thing here that I did, you guys probably noticed, is this flatbed guy. I had uh, leftover plastic wheels. Uh, instead of throwing them out, I decided to make a load out of it. So I started gluing down. There's a couple more plastic wheels I have somewhere else. And once I find them, I'm going to finish up the load on the back end of that trailer. Oh, before I forget, a couple of things that I have on order is a gooseneck light fixture to put over here so i'm gonna have one over this doorway one over by the power plant office over there and then for here i'm thinking of either taking one of the led lights that came with the just plug system i'm, I'm, I'm looking for some liquid tape and make a, a flood lamp or a flood light to go over here another way to do this suggested by rich was taking one of these taking one of these lights over here cutting it off and then gluing that to to the building so if i did that then one would be for this side and then the other one would be for the other mat the other bay door over there so that's an idea that i'm thinking about doing or what's next is i was going to start making some well i, I am going to make trees start making trees but i was going to start putting them along here but i figured with myself you know what i'm, I'm going to hold off just yet i am going to look for a paper background to put over here, I am gonna cut out the sky because I have the sky painted. 
and then I'm gonna paint in some um, some clouds that's still the plan but in regards for landscaping and for depth of field I am gonna see if I can uh, find some pictures so do that cut it out and uh, have something really cool to put there and then I'll go ahead and I'll start planting trees so what so what I have to do is I am definitely gonna get my girls to help me out arts and crafts they love that kind of thing and it's a really good way of spending time with your kids so a couple of things that I picked up at uh, my local hobby shop was some trees. I got the tree armatures from George's Train. Well, actually, not everything from George's Trains, but I got the, the tree armatures plus the um, flock and turf from Green Scene Scenery. I guess that's who they are. All right, so the reason why I went with these two is price cost per tree. Okay, so let's go. It was uh, $22 plus for the armature plus, uh, let's say, $14 times taxes. Okay, it comes out to $37.82. Now, let's divide that. I think it was 114 trees, right? So divided by 114 trees, that's going to come to roughly about $0.33 cents a tree. So this is why I went this way. If I went with Woodland Scenics uh, turf stuff, the you know, their, their stuff, then it would have ended up being like, uh, I did the calculations, almost $2 a tree. So that's a little ridiculous. So this is the ballast that I'm going to be using from Scenics Express. Uh, it looks pretty nice. It's like that grayish with some black stone in it. Got it from my local hobby store. And then you can see the price there right at the bottom. Yeah, almost 20 bucks, uh, 20 bucks after taxes, a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to use for the ballast of the, tr of the tracks. Another thing that I need to pick up is this one right here. LePage, no more nails, duh. So reason why I need more of those is for this. Need to start working up on here, the cliffs area, especially over on the other side of this guy. This area right here. I uh, tried using some stuff to glue the, um, the rocks up against this plaster cloth. For some reason, it doesn't want to stick properly. I tried using a hot glue gun. The glue doesn't adhere to the plaster cloth, but uh, that, no more nail stuff works really nice just put a little bit on the back of the of the molded rocks that i made just hold it for a couple of seconds and next thing you know it uh it's like solid it doesn't want to come off i did that to a couple of those guys over there and uh, worked out really nice gonna do that for over here and the same thing going over the rhino nose which from my kids i have lost the name that is no more called the rhino nose my kids have nicknamed it the rainbow. So that is now called the rainbow bridge. All right, guys, time to make some trees. Yeehaw. So I'm going to start making a couple of trees, start plotting them uh, places, and I will be back. That is it for this month's Leo update. Let you guys know I did break one of my lights over here. Not exactly too happy about it. Uh, I got caught on my sleeve and broke right off. So I'm going to have to replace that. I am going to do a video on that one. Uh, just to show you guys how I'm going to replace it. The light, the lighting for this is making things look more alive, which is really cool. Until next month's layout update, I'll see you then. Just wanted to let you guys know I have Twitter, a Twitter page, and an Instagram page. So you guys can follow that. Usually when I'm doing things as, my, as I go on, I'll, I'll post up pictures. So you'll see the progress of the layout. Up on Twitter or Instagram guys if you want to follow me that that would be awesome really cool uh, other than that that's it guys till next month I'll see you next time keep on modeling what?